control their latency, and you still have this latency, you see that uh, this is your 7x. Because most of the things in this stack up didn't change. The, the media did a lot. And you can see if this blue goes to zero, it doesn't really do much. So that's the problem. Okay, so inadvertently, uh, I mean, it w wasn't the point of this demo, but it demoed the need. I mean, it, we might as well have called it a uh, persistent memory demo. Why you need persistent memory. Okay, now uh, we'll, we'll, uh, I'll blow this chart up a little bit later and we'll get into some of what, what's here. Right now it just looks like one line of dots on the, on the uh, uh, projector, but it, there's more to it than that, obviously. Okay, so we did a bunch of stuff on NVMe. Uh, uh, to, to, to prepare for this in storage. You know, I, 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 my career has mostly been about storage, and so anticipating this memory, it's like, wow, we've got to do a bunch of stuff. We've got to have a new interface like uh, 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 NVMe. Uh, so we created NVMe, or started it, uh, with the help of others, to, to specifically, not just for NAND, but with this in mind. In fact, we got some people say, why are you so focused on latency? It's because we were working on this memory. We thought we had a good choice, chance of delivering it. We wanted it to be as good as possible. So that's why, so you see this latency, you see, okay, the hard drive, that doesn't really matter. Uh, th this latency here, this is a big step. And all you see is we got rid of a bunch of controller latency. And in that controller latency, there are a bunch, bunch of things, like the HBA. You know, with NVMe, you don't really have an HBA. Uh, and so you get rid of the HBA latency. And the command set is much simpler, a very simple command set meant to be fast. So those two things, Make it make this green part, which is a bunch of latencies controller. I know it's labeled here as just um, uh, HBA, but it's uh, 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 the HBA and command set processing latency on both sides of the wire. So that's it. Why is this an important state? Well, for this 20% difference, maybe in performance for, for NAND SSD on SAS or SATA versus uh, NVMe. Uh, okay, it's it's good, but it's not great. But knowing that you're going to come down here. To have a to have an NVMe 3D crosspoint drive, getting rid of this was a really big deal because instead of the seven to eight x we're getting, you would get, you know, two x ish. Okay, and two x taking them as a thousand x and making it two x that's not very exciting, right? And then uh, you know, as persistent memory again, I, I don't really want to make a big point about that just yet. Uh, yeah. Now, a few things about NVMe. Uh, it was designed to be simple and deliver low latency at high IOPS. And that's what this story, this is high IOPS are increasing here, latency is increasing here. These different line families are different numbers in, in this line, different number of cores that are supporting it. And these lines, this is HCI or SATA, and, uh, uh, and this is uh, uh, a rock with different numbers of drives and different numbers of CPUs and stuff. But what you see is, there's a, just a big latency difference between these two. And because this includes queuing delays and all that kind of stuff, you see that pretty quickly, well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with 350,000 IOPS. I mean, that's pretty good. But the latency is still is up there at 40-ish and it greatly increases and hits a wall. With an NVMe drive, this is one drive with different numbers of CPUs. You see, we get out here at what would be, you'd predict, uh, uh, 800K IOPS-ish at 18 microseconds. That's pretty good. So yeah, did NVMe make a big gain? Yes. Is it important? Yeah, really important. Uh, and, but again, it's, uh, I just showed you even with this, which is a big improvement, we're still at that 7x kind of thing. OK, bandwidth, I mean, you, you guys know this about bandwidth, right? I mean, NVMe has a lot more bandwidth. And this is with Gen 3 uh, 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 PCIe, you know, uh, 6.4. Uh, gigabytes a second, that's pretty good. Uh, that's really good. Uh, I, uh, okay, uh, I want to, uh, you know, okay, so there's some other things you have to do, right? Not only do you have to worry about the storage stack inside your one machine or your one node, you gotta worry about your, your you know, in a lot of situations, almost all situations matter, you gotta replicate this data somewhere. And a lot of people don't want to replicate it in the same node for a lot of really good reasons. So how do you replicate to another node with low latency? So that's where this idea of NVMe over fabrics and there are other uh, proprietary versions of this. But that's why you see us working on NVMe over fabrics to have a standard way to 
replicate this low latency command set over a fabric. And so that's why, because if you, uh, again, if you're measuring storage latency and you have to replicate across the node, then suddenly this 7x becomes lower than 7x. And so how do we make that faster? So that's another focus in, is this NVMe over fabrics and integrating some of that into actual fabric controllers and, uh, and accelerating that. Uh, and it's, it's not, uh, we've, we've got demos uh, have shown, NVMe over fabrics demos have shown, you know, uh, 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 when one case, uh, uh, about a microsecond for it, and not, not, this was an Intel demo, but somebody else demoed about a microsecond for NVMe over fabrics, uh, which is really good, really good. Okay, and there are a bunch of other things that are going on. You know, storage stack optimizations, you know, that's mostly an OS kind of thing or uh, a, a stack kind of thing, also a driver kind of thing. Uh, uh, I'm not going to talk about this in, in detail, but um, there are, well, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, partial synchronous completion, you know, it, it's actually, you're talking about media that's so fast now that putting some, you know, uh, doing an asynchronous return Getting, setting up for an interrupt and, having, and completing that interrupt actually takes more time than just polling and waiting for the, the thing to finish. And it uses less OS time and, it uses, uh, and it's quicker in terms of latency. Now there are a bunch of issues with that, what happens when you have queue depth and all that kind of stuff. But exploring that kind of thing is, is something that's going on. Paging overhead, you know, paging in most OSs uh, still comprehends sorting and uh, seek optimization and stuff like that. I mean, that's kind of meaningless for an SSD, and yet it takes time. And so there's a bunch of things to simplify some of the paging algorithms and make them lower latency. Uh, and, you know, what, what do you do about data replicate? We talked about data replication across nodes, but what about data replication if you want to have them the same node? What's your equivalent of hardware RAID? How do you make that fast? How do you make it all, all the right attributes? It's actually, uh, we believe, faster to do that software-based. Uh, uh, but you need some hooks to, to make that completely effective. And so those are some of the architectural things going on in, uh, in the store side. You know, uh, I'm not going to go in for time. I'm not going to go into this in detail. But this is just an example of how everything kind of changes. You know, polling is always bad, except polling takes 4.4 microseconds of OS time and interrupt takes 6.3. Um, and uh, I'm not going to talk about that in detail. That's a paper that was published uh, a few years ago. Uh, uh. Okay, so th now here's the, here's the big payoff. Here's the, the, the punchline of the whole thing, and it's not a surprise because I've told you this is coming. Uh, persistent memory, well, th this is cut off just for, to, for, to blow this up so you get another pixel here so you can actually see something there. But uh, uh, the, So a big jump from <laughs> NAND, and this is 7x because it's cut off, but then to, to 3D crosspoint SSDs. But you see there's still all these different elements of the stack that are there. And you can see we demoed that this is only going to be 7x, 8x with infinitely fast memory. And so this step, how do you get from here down to here? And of course, that's how do you eliminate, how many of these things can you eliminate if you go to a persistent memory type model? And uh, uh, that's what uh, Ken Gibson's going to talk about later on. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about this in great detail, but when you go to a DIM model, you know, a persistent memory model, most of this stuff goes away. Now, it doesn't mean there's any software involved, but for your normal reads and writes, there is no software involved. Uh, now, there is, you can see that there is uh, the little blue one pixel thick line is uh, 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 the, the memory itself, and then the controller with error correction and stuff like that is maybe two pixels high. Uh, but uh, it, it's a lot faster. And they, you know, the reads are not, it's not quite apples to apples because these are 4K byte reads, but these are 64. But you only, a lot of times you only care about 64, so it's a fair comparison. So that's the point. Why persistent memory? Because no matter what you do on the storage stack, this is about as fast as you can go. You make this infinitely fast, it's still, you, you still got a significant amount of latency there. You can eliminate most of that latency, uh, a ton of it by uh, uh, getting uh, to actual memory type usage, persistent memory. Okay, so when you go to, and this is, I'm, not gonna, I'm just gonna explain, you know, uh, I'm not, I mean, just gonna skip through these slides basically. You need a new programming model obviously to do that. 
And this is again, this has been happening in SNEA, so I get, you guys know more about this than I do. But new, new programming model, new libraries, you know, and again, Ken's gonna talk about uh, this. And then you need new instructions to complete all the things that change with a storage class memory. You need instructions to make sure you can flush things out of the right caches and make them truly persistent. And those instructions uh, you know, exist, and, and uh, Andy talks about those. Uh, uh, and I'm not gonna try and explain it, because if I do, it'll take too much time, and, uh, uh, and I, it's not as good as what's gonna happen later on the day. So anyway, that's the point we are in a really exciting time because as Jim said you need at least one storage class memory we have at least one storage class memory shipping this year uh, it'll show up certainly as ultra fast SSDs and that's great and it's going to deliver you know that 7 8 X thing and amazing quality of service amazing parallelism all that kind of stuff but in terms of raw latency it's only going to be 7 X faster and Persistent memory with DIMMs, less than a microsecond, a lot faster. That unlocks the true value of storage class memories, which is why you're here today. So uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. You know, I think the uh, announcements that came this year are probably one of the reasons why, you know, the pre-registration went from, you know, about 300 up to over 600 for this event uh, in a room that only holds 250. So I don't know if the, if the overflow room is, uh, is uh, populated or not. Uh, certainly over the day we expect it to be. Um, I made an announcement this morning. Um, and they'll, we'll help make sure somebody comes up there to show you what it is. But if you could tweet down the information, we have, uh, um, we have a hashtag that to use and the questions will come down so we could uh, take care of them. Um, at this point, uh, we're, to keep this on schedule, mm -hmm. we're, we're going to, uh, now the symposium and the summit split. So those of you who have symposium meetings is, um, we'll, you could uh, leave and go to your, uh, uh, the symposium uh, activities. Uh, we have a little five minute uh, time in here just before our next speaker comes up just to allow uh, people to move from one, one room to another. So uh, once again, I'd like to thank Rick for, for taking time out of his schedule to come here. Uh, I know he's real busy. I asked him to come and he accepted, so that was really good. So the, um, let's take, uh, Five minutes, I mean, it's not really time to even go out and get coffee, but if those of you who need to change rooms, go ahead. Those of you who are standing in the back and waiting for a seat, there should be a few coming up. So thank you.